Hello and welcome to the Codemasters Dirt 5 tech session here at EGX Digital 2020. Got a fascinating session lined up for you here, talking about the development of a key next-gen launch title. And joining me to discuss it, we have the technical director of the project, David Springgate. Hi, Richard, how are you? <laughs> I'm absolutely fantastic. <laughs> How's it all going there? It's good, it's good. Very busy. Very busy. There's some there's some hardware coming out. I don't know if you've heard about it. <laughs> I've heard there might be some new machines that we're going to have to be covering, but uh, <laughs> it's just rumors and speculation. <laughs> but anyway, Dirt 5, cross-gen title, but with a very definite next-gen focus. But before we dive into the technical nitty-gritty, can you give us like an overview of what you're attempting to achieve with this title? So working at Codemasters is... So firstly, it's a great place to work. We've got a lot of great titles. We recently brought Slightly Mad Studios into the Codemasters family. We've got a lot of great racing games, ranging from F1 to Dirt Rally to Project Cars. Dirt 5 is trying to be something a little bit different. So Dirt Rally, the Dark Souls of Racing, that's a great game if you want to sit uh, and really challenge your, your time trial times. You've got a steering wheel, you're a very serious uh, racing fan. Dirt 5 is more for the kind of person that wants to sit on the sofa, chill with some drinks on a Friday night, play split screen with some friends. Dirt 5 has loads of different experiences that, that you wouldn't expect to see in a racing game, and some of them I don't think that we've seen before. Um, the idea of driving through a track, seeing it literally in the middle of the race, not just transition from day to night, um, but to see the weather change from as if it's summer to winter, um, to see lightning strikes going off in the middle of the race, mud slapping against the, the, the side of cars and snow being churned up, as well as our Playgrounds mode. I don't know if you saw that recently when we announced that, but Playgrounds is our service where users can make their own environments, can build their own ramps, their own um, challenges, and share them online on our server and set leaderboard challenges against their friends. Dirt 5 is bringing a lot, I think, to the racing genre um, and doing it looking great as well. Very proud of it. Well, I've had a chance to play a very early PC build, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited with, with with what you're doing with it. But yeah, the technical nitty gritty. Here we go. Um, first of all, um, I really want to talk about the core engine technology because when you look at what Codemasters has got available, um, you say you know the slightly mad studios have just been acquired. They've got their own engine. Uh, historically, Codemasters has developed the Ego engine. I mean, I've just been um, benchmarking for the new NVIDIA launch. This, this thing is incredibly fast. The Ego engine is like astonishingly quick. But this is a Runcorn Studios uh, project. They produced what I think is one of the most overlooked games of the generation, Onrush, running on an amazing engine. So you've got kind of like an embarrassment of technical riches to choose from. So, so where have you gone? Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I appreciate that. The, we have an embarrassment of riches of technology at Codemasters. And I completely agree. We, we have lots of great uh, engine developers, lots of great technology. It's good to share that technology at the business as well and to hear how are the F1 team pushing new hardware? How are Dirt Rally doing the same? What advice can we give to one another? How can we share information? Um, but the engine that we use at Cheshire Studio is completely different. Um, as you say, it, it originally Onrush was developed at Cheshire Studio uh, and Dirt 5 is an evolution of that. It's not the exact same thing, but we've looked at it and said, how are we going to make this do more? How are we going to push it even further? Um, Onrush, uh, thank you for saying a great and overlooked game. I liked it as well. I loved it, in fact. Um, but it didn't come out on PC. And so that provided some challenges when we looked at Dirt 5. We wanted to bring Dirt 5 to, to PC players. How do we push the engine to make it scalable even further? Because Onrush um, scaled very well on, on the consoles. But looking at coming hardware, looking at PC, looking at what's available in the market, there's a lot to do there. A lot to make sure that the engine can scale across all those things. So there were challenges there. Um, Dirt 5 engine is, is quite different than from Onrush. Still completely dynamic as it was before, um, but we've rewritten physics, animation, online multiplayer. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in quite a short time, but yeah, it's been, it's a great engine, great team. 
and uh, yeah, it looks like you're lo looking to utilize it for the next gen consoles. So obviously, we've heard some of the key features that you're going to be bringing to the likes of uh, the new Xbox Series and um, PlayStation 5. But what are the opportunities that these new machines give you? So I think probably there's, um, there's a moment when every game developer uh, gets to find out about the specifications of new hardware and they, they just start thinking, what if, and what can I do with this? And start looking at all of the different parts and making sure, oh, what can I do with, direct, with, with fast storage and direct storage on Xbox? What can I do with variable rate shading or ray tracing or whatever? So we looked at all of the different things and thought about how could we apply them? What can we do with the time that we've got? Um, we haven't finished saying everything that we're doing about Dirt 5 yet, but yeah, we, look, we looked at all of the different pieces of technology, different opportunities. I think that in every way we want to look at quality. So if you have a variable rate refresh rate screen, um, a FreeSync 2 display, I want to make sure that you can use it if I can. If you have a next-gen console that can support 120 hertz, I'd like to be able to make that happen. If you have a TV that does HDR10, yeah, sure, I want that. Um, I'm the kind of person that buys those things. I, I want those things to work. I want it to look beautiful. Um, I want it to be a product of quality. I think that's something that the entire team are bought into. They're very passionate about making sure that the game is at the highest peak of quality that we can achieve. Um, so I guess that Everything that we look at in next-gen platforms, yes, sure, there's loads of features that come that just give you more raw speed. But there's also things that allow you to do things that you couldn't do before, and we want to make sure we use them. Mm -hmm. And one of those things, well, you could do it on Xbox, but I don't think the horsepower was there to do it, is 120 frames per second. And um, this has been kind of like uh, one of the big marketing messages that's going to differentiate this version from the current gen versions mm. and um well uh, <laughs> um how are you able to achieve 120 frames per second and, <laughs> and actually yeah another question should it be the focus when let's let's say you know um or should it be a focus it's not going to be the focus but sh but should it be a focus when basically you know what, 99% of your audience will have a 60 hertz screen? As I said before, consumers are, are going to want quality. So if you have a TV, one of these new LG CX series TVs, one of the Samsung QLEDs, if your TV can support 120 hertz, it's a FreeSync 2 display, you're going to be asking, why doesn't it? Um, right. I happen to have a TV that does that, and I'm asking, why doesn't it? So I want the fire to run 120 hertz because that's what you're going to want to see. It's an aspirational feature. Um, it allows us to play a little bit, really, thinking about the, the way in which the game feels. So there are two, two tracks for it. There's how do I feel about this as a developer and how do I feel about this as a player? So as a developer, I want to look at 120 hertz and think, what do I need to do in the engine to push it to be able to reach 120 hertz? All of the optimizations and speed benefits that I'm going to get in trying to squeeze things into that, some of those are going to, are going to come over to the 60 hertz option, and that's going to bleed down into other, other modes. So it's going to, general optimizations are always going to help. But from a player, that causes me to go, actually, well, 120 hertz, how does it feel? I'm curious. I want to have a go. What does that do to a racing game? Is it quantifiably different? 120 versus 60? 60 versus 30 is obviously a gargantuan difference in feel. Is, am I going to get that again? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you think about that. Um, and actually, I wanted to talk to you about this because you did a video uh, about input latency mm. and 120 hertz and what does that do? I watched the video, you were asking about um, how does input latency come into it with 120 hertz? So new hardware like Xbox Series S and Series X um, support low latency input for controllers. Um, that requires you to think differently about how your frame is structured. You want to make sure that the GPU um, is triggered way earlier in the frame, as soon as possible. So making sure that in Dirt 5, as soon as absolutely possible in the frame, we capture input, do the physics update, and kick off the GPU, and then do any other work that we possibly can. 
making sure that the game feels different in 120 FPS is, is important. So I'm looking forward to seeing what players think. It, does it feel different? Do they appreciate that? It's interesting because not everybody does, I think. Um, 120 FPS is so hardcore and it's going to be for those people that really, really want that kind of feature. It's um, when I hand it to the handling guys, people who uh, are paid to play racing games, essentially make the game feel great, make the cars handle correctly in the studio. They notice and they say, this is great. This feels really good. I can't go back, all that stuff. Um, you hand it to someone that's way more casual. They're you know, a Mario Kart fan. They might not notice the difference, but 120 FPS is not just um, a feature that we've developed because we just fancied doing some R&D, but because this is what the new hardware does. You bought the new hardware, you want something to show it off, Dirt 5 is the game to do it. So, so what's the key enabler of it though? Is it the fact that you've got this huge leap in CPU? Is it the, the, the boost to GPU? Is it both? I think it's a combination of all of those things plus clever engineering. Um, and I say that as the one who didn't do the clever engineering. <laughs> so thinking hard about um, how do we make use of the CPU? So Dirt 5 it uses some technology from Intel for how we think about um, scheduling on the CPU. So in, in a modern video game, you have multiple CPU cores, as you know. How do you divide up your work across those cores? Because really to achieve maximum quality at maximum frame rate, you need to keep all of your cores as busy as possible all of the time. Don't leave a core waiting to do something because that's a waste of CPU time. So you end up with engines that build job systems. Um, how do we do the scheduling across those things and planning in advance in the frame? If I know that I need to do a physics update and then a weather update and an animation update, what are the dependencies there and how do I schedule those things across the cores? Um, we don't do any of that because actually someone previously on the Onrush engine has thought that's a waste of time. Thinking about those things, you, you probably could have just done the work instead of thinking about it. How can you just crack on as quickly as possible? So when it comes around to doing your digital foundry report on Dirt 5, which I will look forward to, you'll find that CPU Core Zero will be 100% maxed out all of the time. But what it's doing is churning through the things that it's trying to figure out, well, what things should I quickly kick off across all of the other cores? And so you'll see massive spikes across every single CPU core. Um, that allows us to scale well from an Xbox One base all the way up to a Series X. Um, so Series X out of the box for the developer has the same number of cores as uh, an Xbox One. But you enable um, SMT, simultaneous multi-threading, and which is similar technology to hyper-threading in a PC, but with less contention of resources. Um, you, you end up with a huge amount of performance gain in an engine like the Dirt 5 engine. So we, we worked closely with Microsoft um, when they gave us the hardware and we talked about how is it that we're going to achieve 120 FPS. It wasn't a goal that they came to us with, we just said let's, let's give it a go, let's have some fun and, and see what we can do. Um, and we tried the SMT and immediately the engine running Dirt 5 was hitting over 100 FPS, just straight away, just with that one difference of enabling SMT. Um, of course, then we can make some optimizations at that point and have, you have to start looking at the frame and thinking, okay, well, is there anything I can jiggle around here, make things overlap in different CPU scheduling jobs? Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty easy to initially get up and running with 120 FPS. The challenge at that point was, what parts of the title can we hit uh, with 120 FPS? What, where are we gonna hit limits with that? Mm -hmm. um, that might be a hard thing for someone to understand that 120 FPS is, is a very difficult goal. Um, but typically in a 60 FPS game, a frame is 16.6 milliseconds. Trying to do it in literally half the time, the same game at 8.3 milliseconds is, is quite an undertaking. So I think that kind of showcases the, the raw horsepower of these new consoles that, um, particularly in Xbox Series X, you, you just turn on SMT and suddenly boom, you've got 
loads more power to play with, I, I was blown away. Um, and that doesn't happen very often anymore. <laughs> Hardware doesn't surprise in the same way that it used to, but actually these new consoles are quite different. Yeah, I mean, you were saying that 120 frames per second isn't easy. And I suspect that any PC user uh, would have seen that, you know, running a high refresh rate display, very rarely you actually locked to its maximum refresh uh, because, you know, anything can happen at any point and typically you hit some kind of CPU limit. Um, I guess my question following on from that is, um, is, is pretty simple. I mean, when you're talking about 120 frames per second, is it up to 120 frames per second, that kind of special legalese that comes in uh, probably because we exist, um, or is it actually? Are you actually targeting a locked 120? So, Dirt Five is a complicated game, and uh, it, to be completely honest with you, I have no idea. We're we're aiming for a, a locked 120 FPS. I want that throughout the entire title. Um, currently, we're running a locked 120 in time trials, in playground modes. We're hitting around 100 to 110 in career modes. We're not done yet. We're still optimizing. The title's not finished. So I want to be able to say 120 FPS is going to be available throughout the title. Don't quote me on saying that because we're not there yet. And I can't promise that we're going to get there. But that's just to put it all on the table. We're going for 120. We're, we're bought in on that. We want you to experience that. We want the player to see it and feel it. We're going to do our absolute best to get there. But the problem is I don't want to compromise on the gameplay. Everything requires um, a compromise. So maybe we're going to dial the crowd numbers back in order to, to hit 120. Maybe we're going to turn down the IK animations a little bit. Um, maybe we'll dial back the cloud quality. Maybe, I don't know, some other things. But it won't be physics because you don't want to change the feeling of the game. Mm -hmm. So trying to figure out where you're willing to compromise, where you want to compromise, what a player is going to care about in that compromise. Those are parts of the questions that come out when you start looking at 120 FPS. Not necessarily about can the console do it at 120 FPS, because even looking at your own, your own videos, right? Thinking about a title like The Witcher 3, it's astounding that it came out on the Nintendo Switch. Absolutely astounding. Obviously, there are huge compromises between the Nintendo sure. Switch version and the Xbox One X version. But the gameplay is exactly the same, pretty much. So how do we achieve that goal, hitting 120 FPS? I want to be able to say it's about quality. We want to give you the same experiences. Trying to figure out what things we're willing to compromise and not it is part of the equation. Yeah, I think something that's happened, particularly with the arrival of the enhanced consoles, is that there has been a focus uh, for developers to give players choice, uh, specifically mm. like um, quality and performance mode. So, how does this work with uh, with Dirt Five? Assuming I'm assuming there's going to be a, like maybe a, a mode that targets 60 frames per second, and then you can switch to the 120 frames per second mode if that's the trade you want to make. So, actually, we, we're trying to give you as many different options that are suitable for your hardware as possible. So. On base consoles, there's going to be a 30 FPS mode. You might want the game to look really great. That might be the thing that you care about. Some players, they care more about the experience. They want the game to feel really great. We're going to make some visual compromises to be able to uh, hit 60. We're trying to get that done for the base consoles. Um, but Because the, there are challenges as Dirt 5 spans such a huge amount of, of different pieces of hardware, right? On something like Series S, there's, there's not a 30 FPS option, that doesn't make sense, because Series S is a great piece of kit, amazing. So making sure that that has a, a 60 FPS mode, but also 120 FPS mode, that those are things that players can choose between. Um, but even then, we might still offer you a 60 FPS mode that's more lock, that's locked to 60, and then we might have one that has a bit more visual options, something that looks a little nicer, but perhaps frames out in very extreme circumstances. We want to make sure that we give you options that make sense. Um, don't want to lock you into something that's a bad experience, but we want to try and push it as far as we can. I mean, you just mentioned uh, Xbox Series S. And mm. uh, yeah, looking at my notes here, I'm asking about, uh, are you able to talk about how Xbox Series S factors into your thinking when 
uh, two days ago, I saw a video that actually showed your game running on Series S. Now, I'm not going to be casting aspersions on uh, Microsoft's integrity, but was it really running on Series S, that footage? At Cheshire Studio, we have a policy that anything you see at Dirt 5 is always legit. We don't fake, we don't fudge things. If we can't show it, what am I showing it for? So what you saw running on Series S was running on Series S. I captured it myself. Um, I didn't do the driving because you, you don't want to see me do the driving. Uh, one of the chaps in the studio actually held the control pad, but we captured it on my dev kit at my desk and, and sent it directly to Microsoft. That, that footage is exactly as it was. It hasn't been played with. Um, so, that's running on the Series S. Wow, because the Series S is a fascinating uh, product. Super, mm. che super cheap, but um, very capable in very specific ways. Um, can you share some insights on what it's like to develop for that alongside the Series X? To be honest, it's really easy. Um, Series S, is, the way it was pitched to me from Microsoft when they first told me about it, which was, golly, a long time ago now, um, they said, Series S uh, is Series X, but you should target 1440p instead. Um, so yes, it has less RAM. You've seen that in the technical specs. I saw your uh, your video the other night talking about speculation about uh, back compat on Series S. I don't know how it works either, but it's it has less RAM. There's less that you're going to be able to do, but are you going to notice? So if we put 4K assets in the Xbox Series X version, and they're not available in the Series S version, if the Series S version is running at say 1440p. Are you going to notice that those textures aren't there? Does that matter? And is that really the experience that's aimed at that person that spent £250 on buying a Series S? So in terms of development, it really comes down to we have high resolution texture packs that are available for the higher end consoles that can do that. Uh, then we just dial back resolutions and sometimes things like amounts of crowd or intensity of weather or shadow quality, things like that um, for the different platforms. Actually, how it works in the Dirt 5 engine is we have uh, literal files to describe configurations. So we'll have a configuration for um, quality on Xbox One, um, performance on Xbox One, then a completely different configuration again for PS4 that plays to its strengths. So it's not a carbon copy of the Xbox One version, it will be actually tailored for PS4 and quality and performance. The same goes through all of the different SKUs, including PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, Series S, Series X, PS5. Um, that makes your job very hard when it comes around to the Digital Foundry report, and I'm sorry about that. But it's about trying to get to, um, to deliver a quality experience for the user that's bought, say, an Xbox One X and is holding onto it, or a PS4 Pro, or even a base PS4. They want the best thing for their system. Um, so we'll sit, we'll look at it and we'll go, okay, on this system, perhaps it's got something about it that allows high quality tessellation. So let's turn it up a little bit. Does that affect performance in all of these different scenarios and trying to level it out a little bit? That's a bit of a challenge to be honest, because um, we're not used to building for this many different systems. There's a lot of different SKUs now. It feels a little bit how I imagine mobile phone develop mobile game developers must feel, because they're targeting all of the different phones across iPhone and Android. How do you build an experience that works for works really great for everything? We're trying our very best. So we're looking at all of the different hardware and tuning appropriately. Yeah, I'll level with you. I mean, cross gen terrifies me. Uh, four Xboxes, three PlayStations, PC. If it's terrifying me, I've got no idea what it's going to be doing for you guys who are actually developing the games. So I, it's I, a challenge. <laughs> I commend you there. But it is, uh, I guess, testament to the scalability of the engine and um, I guess trying to find the sweet spots for each of them. Yeah, having lots of hardware and, and scaling, especially considering um, there's a lot of hardware out there. You know, there's uh, 110 million PS4s, is that right? Um, you can't ignore those consumers. There's a lot of there's a lot of gamers who really want to enjoy your game. So you can't just target the the new shiny stuff, 120 FPS on an Xbox Series X and a PS5, because 
there are a lot of players out there who want to play Dirt 5 and they want to have a great experience too. How do we make the engine scale well across those things? That might mean, as I said, having different um, density of crowd, different features, but you're not going to mess with physics. But you are going to maybe say dial back resolution, dial back shadow quality and texture quality. Um, in terms of can we be locked 60, locked 120, locked 4K, like many engines, we employed dynamic resolution uh, to be able to, to help things out with that. But the goal is never to, to just rely on it, to use it as a crutch and say, actually, we know that the game really could only run at 45 FPS, but let's just turn on dynamic resolution and it'll all be fine. Um, actually, internally, when we test the title, dynamic resolution is disabled so that we know where are we at, how far off are we, um, because the goals are, are always to, to hit the frame rate that we want. Um, but dynamic resolution is a little bit of an escape rope when, when you're a bit stuck. Um, trying to test all of the different things that can happen in, in quite a crazy game like Dirt 5. Trying to make sure that the game is a solid 60 FPS on, say, an Xbox One X at 4K, when you've got a really beautiful environment but suddenly all 12 cars are crammed into one shot lots of mud kicking up and all that stuff those are standout scenarios and so we might drop the resolution a little bit there mm. um but yeah making sure the engine scales well in all of those scenarios is a key part of the experience got to keep the fun moving mm -hmm. and i think you know looking at onrush those scenarios that you described actually handled really well yeah. <laughs> um, just sort of moving on to PC now, um, I guess if we're talking about a highly scalable engine, then PC kind of encompasses both extremes? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, we've released our minimum and recommended specs. Um, if anyone's watching or wants to know, you can see those on Steam or you can find them on our Twitter account. Um, but yeah, scalability on PC, I think is very, very important. I'm primarily a console player, but plenty of people across the team are diehard PC gamers. Um, and I think people who buy stuff like 24 core thread rippers and things like that, they want their, their hardware to be pushed. They bought it to be pushed. Uh, and many of those gamers are, are buying it for games. They, they want to push their games absolutely as far as possible. Um, Dirt 5 will scale really well on that. We'll make full use of all of your cores. It's, it, the thought of it angers me when you boot up a PC game and you see a game using only four cores when you've got 16 available or something. I don't want that. So what we do is detect how many CPU cores you've got on boot. Uh, we adjust all of the, the different CPU jobs to make sure that they scale across them. You'll just see the CPU time go like that. The more cores you throw at it. Um, I want to see the game be future proof. I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen with Dirt 5 in five years time. How well does it run then? Not, not to pile any pressure on you, but there are 64 core thread rippers now. <laughs> Bring them on, I guess. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That'd be great. Okay, so let's just wrap up here. If there's one thing you'd like the audience to take away from this session, what is it? Any gamers watching this footage, the thing I really want them to know um, is that Dirt 5 is, is both a new game for Codemasters, but also leaning into the heritage that you'd see in games like Dirt 2 and Dirt 3. It's, it's all about fun. We want you to have loads of fun, but we want you to do it in, with great quality. We want the game to feel great, we want it to look great. We want you to feel like if you bought Dirt 5 alongside your PlayStation 5, you've got a title that pushes it. You've got something you can invite your friends over and enjoy split screen and enjoy that. You've got something that's going to push your HDR panel. You, honestly, when I look at it in HDR, I think, man, this is great. This is great. I'm having a great time. I can't wait to get it home and play it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people think of that. Um, one of the things I'm very proud of on the team um, and it, it is the vehicle artists. They're making incredible, incredible cars. Keep an eye out for the photo mode and look at the game and see that it's beautiful. See that it's loads of fun. Um, and if maybe you're looking for something a little different in racing, take a look at Playgrounds because it's a great mode. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what people create and share on there because it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic mode. Well, look, David, I could talk to you all afternoon, but we have to draw this to a close. So just thank you very much for joining us for this one. I've learned a lot. Hopefully the audience has too. 
and I really appreciate your time. So thanks for that. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure, trust me. <laughs>